we're actually ready. Uh, do you want me introducing myself? Or just go? All right, here we go. Hey, everybody, welcome to the 2019 NRA Annual Meetings. You're at the Springfield Army booth, and I'm Rob Latham, and this is my buddy Steve Horseman. Uh, we want to tell you a little bit about the Springfield Army M1As. The M1A was our first product. In 74, uh, when we started up, the very first thing that we sold were M1As, where we built off old, original GI M14 parts kits. We just produced basically a new receiver, and all the other parts were available. Over the years, of course, that's all dried up, and now we produce every part. And instead of just that one variant, we now have short ones and long ones and precision models. And Steve, can you run them through real quick on the sizes? Yeah, you know, basically the, 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 the model that Rob referenced would have been pretty much our standard one today. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, still a hugely popular seller. All the standard M1As have a, um, and the loaded series, have a 22-inch barrel. That was the original mm -hmm. configuration. Um, years went by, we came out with a Scout Squad model. Mm -hmm. um, that's an 18, right? That's an 18-inch barrel, right. yep. And then about, I don't know, was it maybe 10 or 12 years ago, something like that, we came out with the SOCOM right. 16. That was a 16-inch barrel. Um, that's kind of a variant of this one right here. This is the, the, the latest version of the SOCOM, and this is a SOCOM CQB. And the first thing that people will notice, Rob, is it's got a pistol grip on it, and it's got, right. a, it's got a, a telescoping buttstock, right. okay? And the most, then the next most obvious thing that you see on this is it's got an optical slide on it. Mm -hmm. It's got a little mini red dot on it. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, that's that's the thing that just flies out of it. You see those three things, and you're like, wow, what is that? Right. Um, and other than that, well, it's just pure SOCOM. It makes it the most compact variant that's that's possible for uh, an M1A rifle because it's a 16-inch barrel. I know it's got a really got a different gas system here. It's mm -hmm. got a different muzzle brake on it. And I know from shooting this because I own one. It's not like I've never seen one before. Um, this rifle kicks so lightly for its caliber for 308 that you just wouldn't even believe to shoot it it's got another optical sight mount here for that what that what we call the scout mounts right so it's a scout rifle barrel mounted and that also works but uh like you like you use an extended eye relief but you know it goes to a little more of what we consider the modern ergonomics of the rifle <laughs> it's a uh, got a pistol grip and all that on it but what's really cool is the way the m14 and their for M1A mechanism works, this isn't a buffer tube. Like what you're used to seeing on like an AR style rifle, there's a spring in here, right? That's not there. The spring is actually underneath the barrel. And an interesting side note is the M1A is a piston driven design. So all the rage uh, for some manufacturers to pr produce AR-15 style rifles with piston driven uh, uh, gas systems, M1A came with it from the get go. Long time ago. Yep. Now that's that's a 16 inch SOCOM CQB. Then we have an 18 inch uh, Scout, right? Correct. Then the full size guns are all 22 inch barrels, but this one is personally my favorite. This is a M1A loaded 6.5 Creedmoor uh, PAS, which means precision adjustable stock. Uh, with all my interest lately in precision rifle shooting, I've kind of fallen in love with this. You the know, the first thing you see is obviously the stock. Right. You know, that, that's the big difference. Again, it's got that, that, that vertical grip that is right. so popular for most of these. Right. Periodic. A lot of these positions, when you're in, your, in a funky position, you know, you, you really want to be able to get this, this hand position on the gun. Right. And this makes lots of room for your hand to come in. It's got adjustable cheek piece, adjustable length of pull. So this, this really optimizes the M1A platform when you put a scope base on it. So you put a scope base on it, and then your face is too low because the standard stock is designed to work with iron sights. Well, when you put that adjustable comb on it, I can crank the stock up so that my cheek piece is the proper weld to shoot the long range. Uh, right. Or use an optical sight. And I, th I don't know. He did say 6.5 Creedmoor. So this one's a 6.5 Creedmoor. There are 308s and 6.5 Creedmoors. Yep. I think 6.5 Creedmoor is destined to be the, the 308 of the next generation Probably, of M1As yeah. you can sit her down flat there. And what's cool about that particular gun is it just takes the the standardized, the, the reliability. Every M1A is an ex extremely reliable mechanism. It's very simple. It's not a complex mechanism. It's kind of hard to make, uh, which is why the guns aren't as cheap as, a, as an AR-15 might, variant might be. But that's because there's a little more involved in making it from the standpoint of manufacture. But the, the reliability, the durability, there's a reason that this platform 
which uh, was, in, was developed in the 50s and introduced in the early 60s, is still a very popular tactical rifle is because it's so durable. It's so accurate. Um, my version of this rifle, uh, I have it because we had somebody on an Internet thing who went in and said there was some accuracy problems with it. So they sent me one and said, we need you to go out and shoot it and see if there's an issue. So I just bought some Hornady Black Ammo, which is the cheapest, or sorry, it was Hornady American Gunner, which is the one that yeah. comes in the little plastic box. Little boxes, yeah. And that's the cheapest ammo I could find. And I went out and immediately proceeded to zero it. And I shot a sub one inch group, then I shot a sub three quarter inch group, then I shot a group at a half an inch, and I shot another group at three quarters of an inch. And I really don't know what kind of accuracy problems they're talking about. But, but uh, for an auto loading rack grade gun, I mean, that's a, that's a standard non bedded, it's just assembled into the stock and it really speaks volumes for how accurate the mechan mechanism is. Now, you go to Camp Perry. Yes. So tell them a little bit about the M1A match there. So what we do is we have a, a match that's been going on for, I, I don't know, 15, 20 years, something like that? I don't know. I, I was at time. the first one a long time ago. It's been a long time. And one of the things that we, we've done is you, you drug me out there about five years ago. And, and, of course, I shot one of your rifles. It was the less accurate of the two well, rifles. Well, of course. I, I wasn't going was to give you the good one. So <laughs> we went out there, and it's, it's, it's pretty much dominated by the full-size 22 inch rifle because we're shooting out of 300 yards iron sights um, there's three positions you're mm -hmm. shooting prone you're sitting sitting and you're shooting standing standing and and the the genius of the event that when it was designed was they start you off prone then you go to sitting so now that you're nice and tired and you're hot or maybe you're <laughs> wet from the rain um, they make you stand up and make the you end. do the hardest part the hardest part at the end and unlike normal high power it's the same target at the same distance it's all shot at 300 or as normal standing shot at 200 it's actually pretty difficult right uh, and the, this year the prone part is really not tough because the rifles are so accurate and if you're in a good position even sir and i shot we did a video about it and you know i got down there and i practiced a little bit and uh, i get up there and i shoot and i shoot a 98 prone slow fire and i'm thinking okay this is going pretty good well i expect nothing less the gun and you were shooting a super match right super match, yeah. so the super match guns a good one shoots close to half a minute of angle pretty regularly with iron sights. Yeah, and so I, I go to the, the rapid fire prone. I shoot like a 94 or something like that, 93, and I'm thinking, okay, this is going pretty good. <laughs> I'm going to win this thing. And then <laughs> I was. I was thinking that. And I'm like, <laughs> so then I go to the sitting, and I'm like, okay, well, you know, with my two fake hips, it's kind of hard to get in the sitting position, but I did it. I can get down there. It's just harder to get out of it. Yeah. I shoot some 80-something. Like, okay, well, that wasn't great, but that was okay. I'll take it. And then I stand up. <laughs> My first shot was a miss. <laughs> like, well, I'm out of the running now. This is not yeah, going to happen. You're dead meat now. Yeah, so, but it, it's never the gun. So that match is really cool. There's about 400 people that shoot it every year. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it's run at Camp Perry, usually in the last part of the CMP week, right? CMP week mm -hmm. with rifles, yeah. Um, yep. And it is, a couple years ago, did it in conjunction, same day as the, the Garand match, but now the Garand match is the day before. So you, a lot of people have Garands, a lot of people have M1As. Yeah, the same people that love M1As. Love grands. Love grands. And I, I encourage people, if you've never been out there, to check it out. The match entry fee is nothing. It's $40 or something yeah. like that. You get a T-shirt. You get to shoot the match. You get to see me. You know, so. And that in itself has got to be worth that kind of entry fee. Exactly. exactly. Well, the, the, the interesting, thing, interesting thing about the whole platform, if you look at the, how variable it is. I mean, there are very few platforms that have lasted for the period of time that the M1A has and has still become relevant. I mean, we talk about 1911s. Why do we still want 1911s? Because they have great triggers. Right, that's why. Um, engineering that is very simple to understand and uh, uh, very, very accurate guns and reliable when all the parts are perfectly assembled. Exactly the same is true for M1As. We don't have M1A reliability problems. We don't have durability problems. We don't have breakages. We don't have accuracy problems. Because this mechanism came from a time when those things were valued over ease of manufacture, mm -hmm. ease of assembly. It was designed at a time when how can we make it as good as we can, not necessarily as fast as we can. So for you guys like me that like something that is, I don't know, if traditional is the right word for it. Because I, well, I, well, I've had them for decades. I, I still love to shoot them, especially the new versions. My eyes are going. I want, I want optical sights. Sure. With the CQB, now I can have a red dot sight. So it takes advantage of that mechanism that's so accurate, so reliable, and now makes it so I can see the sight with the red dot. It's quick and compact. I can put the, 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 my Night Force 7 to 35 attacker on this thing and shoot three quarter minute angle groups and hit everything I'm trying to shoot at and shooting PRS. So it kind of makes a neat, neat platform, not only traditional but relevant today. Yeah, you I know, just love it. A couple of cool things is I do a lot of law enforcement shows, Rob, mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll take out on range days. 
you know, we'll take out our Saint line of guns, we'll take out handguns, and I, I usually have one or two M1As. And the interesting thing to me is that I'll run out of the 308 ammo first. Long before you lose 223. Because guys will come up, and, you know, I realize it's probably not a, a hugely popular law enforcement rifle, which I don't understand why, but they the, the cops are interested in it. The guys say, I want to shoot that. I've never shot right. one. I've always wanted one. You know, and, and another thing that I notice, I mean, you're not... The, the, the AR platform rifle has been around now for 60, almost 70 years, mm -hmm. but you pick that plastic gun up and then you pick <laughs> just up Just the way he these. says that. Or just, there's disdain in his voice, that plastic gun. <laughs> that plastic gun. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I love plastic guns, but when you pick up like a Woodstock M1A yeah. rifle, you feel like you're holding part of history. And yeah. it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it feels like a rifle. And, you know, the, the last thing I want to mention on this is that, you know, the cool thing is that you've ever watched any of the footage from Afghanistan and Iraq when we were having those, there's still guys that are using them then mm -hmm. because they want something that's rugged, reliable. And, you know, if you remember the whole Black Hawk Down thing, then just there was some stuff that just came out a couple of weeks ago about it, uh, about that event in Mogadishu. It was that one of those Army Delta guys that went in to save um, Michael Durant was shooting an M14. Mm -hmm. He had an M14. You know, and that, that was, I mean, granted, it was in the early, but that was the early 90s, but still, that was, they're still using them today. All right. Well, there's a reason. It's a good piece of equipment. It's accurate and reliable, and it, it hits the hard strings. So it's a little bit more than, than what you might normally see. So if you're one of those lovers out there like I am and like Steve is, you don't have to justify why you love it. You know why you love it. It's an awesome piece of equipment. And if you want to learn more about it, you can go to springfield-armory.com and look at all sorts of M1As. And if so you're here at the NRA show, come by the booth and take a look at it. Yeah, them. we're right here. Yeah, we're right here. All right, well, thank you very much for your time, and uh, hey, go shooting.